Uh, thank you, Kirchler. Um, thank you very much, Minister. I, as you know, I'm very enthusiastic for your plans and, and your budget. Um, and uh, so I, I think it is ambitious, excellent. The programme for government is, is really good towards disability services. And I commend you in, in how you have conducted the department thus far and your responsibilities thus far. Uh, I, I want to begin by acknowledging the enormous um, uh, difficulties experienced by families with disabilities, uh, our families, uh, people with disabilities and their families uh, during the pandemic. Um, diminished access throughout uh, the pandemic has caused huge hardship, undermined progress in supports and developments. Yeah, the, the requirement for isolating meant just that, that, that people with disabilities and their families were, were isolated um, in keeping their loved ones safe. Uh, I support a number of, of organisations. Uh, one in particular has particular significance to me, and I, I mentioned it to you last week, and that is Walk in, in Drimna, uh, because I think that they embody everything that you would want in a disability service, in the empowerment of people with disabilities and, uh, they, and in bringing the community to people with disabilities and people with disabilities to the community. Uh, they run two events each year, and sadly not this year, in Halloween and Christmas that are fantastic, look forward to by children. My own child looks forward to it uh, each year. In, 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 and it, there is this mix of the people who run that uh, are the people with disabilities. The, and, and it is fantastic. So we have this, uh, this complete shared space and shared community and shared. Um, WALK itself is a Section 39 organisation. And it's that that I, w I want to talk to you about. The difference in staffing uh, remuneration between Section 38 and Section 39 organisations. Um, in order to survive the, the winter surge and co of COVID and to continue uh, to keep their day services open, they are desperately trying to attract, motivate and retain the, the workers that they have, the frontline workers that they have. Um, their, their, their employees are ordinary people who are also trying to combat uh, coronavirus. Uh, you know, they're working day in, day out. They work long shifts. They sacrifice time with their family and friends. Uh, in, and, and put themselves and their families at risk of, of contracting the virus. And it is within the context of uh, mental and emotional fears that we that have, that society in general has in the context of COVID. Um, Section 39 organisations are the community and voluntary not-for-profit organisations. Uh, and they have the legal service agreements with, with, the, uh, with the HSE. Um, they, their funding is three billion, uh, apparently across the whole thing for the section for this area, um, and there are over three thousand agencies administering uh, um, these uh, these two types of contracts. However, the salary there is a distributive injustice in the salary between Section 39 and Section 38 workers. Um, in 2008, in response to the the obviously the, the crash, the the, the they, this particular category of workers were categorised then as public servants for the purposes of cutting their salaries. However, now they're not. And yet the Section 38 are, and as a consequence, they've had six increments since 2018, whereas the Section 39 haven't had any. And we have, so then when you put an organisation like Walk trying to retain their staff, trying to attract staff, the competition with the Section 39 uh, is 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 high, obviously, because there's pensions remuneration issues. Then on top of that, you have their own staff. Then it's 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 less stressful to work in a supermarket, and and probably greater remuneration got to got to do with that. So this has a consequence. The, the disparity of this has a consequence in that the staff uh, in an organisation like Walk, they have been invested in, they've been trained, they're you know highly qualified, and and yet if they leave for jobs that are better remunerated with less responsibility and less stress. Um, and the, the direct consequences in the ability of services like that to deliver their disability day services. You know, so while organisations are getting better at online, and, and that has certainly has been a new, a new aspect of, of the pandemic that has been very good. However, in intellectual disabilities, nothing beats the in-person service. And, and I know you know that, Minister. So it, it is necessary for both the, the individuals and their families to be able to cope. Um, they, they have seen huge increases in mental health issues as well. And so now more than ever, they need staff that are that highly experienced. 
And unfortunately, given that disparity, they're, they're then having to employ and engage people who are less experienced, you know, equally qualified, no doubt, but less experienced. And, uh, and, I, and I think that, the, you know, so the pay disparity resu results in that, um, that recruitment of people, at a, particularly right now, particularly at a time when we really need experienced people working in amongst these voluntary and community sectors. So uh, I would urge you, Minister, to try uh, to review that and to try and do whatever is within your powers to do and to change that, uh, as I believe it would be very necessary and make a really significant difference in, in these very valuable community organisations. Thank you very much.